In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the ABYC formulas. We're going to learn how to compare this to the cable ratings tables, correcting for ambient temperatures and correcting for bunching of cables in a loom. In order to size cables using the ABYC formulas, we need to consider amps, voltage drop, resistance and cable length. Let's look first at these individually. The current in amps is one of the main deciding factors, as higher currents require thicker cables to carry them. All cables will cause some voltage drop, so we have acceptable levels that we can safely work with as set out by the ABYC. The voltage drop is due to resistance, as all cables have some resistance. We use the figure 10.75 ohms as a recognised standard for the resistance of one foot of one circular mill of copper. On the board here, you can see each foot of cable is acting like a resistor in series, and all those resistances add up. However, if we make the cable thicker, the resistance goes down, so thicker cables have less voltage drop, simply because they have less resistance. So longer cables must be thicker. The two cables on the board here are both carrying 10 amps, but the shorter cable can be thinner than the longer cable and still have the same volt drop. We can use all the variables above to calculate cable size based on a specific acceptable voltage drop. So we're going to use the Kyle formula here. Now K is a constant in this formula of 10.75 ohms. It never changes as it's the resistance in ohms of a theoretical one foot strand of a one circ mil copper cable. So from now on, it will simply be referred to as K. Also remember, we use the letter I in formulas for amps. We will show all the metrics at this stage. L is the total length of the conductors from the source to the load and then back again. And E is an acceptable voltage drop for the circuit. And remember this is 3% for essential loads and no more than 10% for other loads. And CM is the cable size in circular mills. So we can work out the cable size by multiplying K by the current and then by the length of both the positive and negative conductors in feet, then we divide this by your acceptable voltage drop. So let's do an example. Well, we know what K is, 10.75. This figure is a constant in this formula and the accepted standard under the regulations. And we're gonna use an example of say 10 amps and the full loop length of cable, including the positive and negative conductors in our example is gonna be 33 feet. We wanna ensure that we don't exceed a 0 0.36 volt drop with this circuit. So we just tap into the calculator, 10.75 times 10 times 33 divided by 0 0.36. And this will give us 9854 circular mils. Now the only available conductor nearest to and above this value is 10 AWG. This is a fairly heavy cable for such a light load, but given this length of cable and the fact that it is an essential load, it is what's required to ensure we do not exceed the 3% voltage drop limit. So now we know the copper part of this cable size has a safe voltage drop, we must now consider the capabilities of the insulation. So now we have a look at the ampacity table. All cables have a heat rating, and this is normally 221 degrees Fahrenheit. It should however be printed on each cable as part of the cable manufacturing process. I would recommend if you are adding to your wiring to use this rating. This table shows us the nominal current ratings for each of the cable sizes 
based on their insulation temperature ranges. For cables rated at 140 degrees Fahrenheit that are to be used outside the engine bay, we can use this column here. And we can see in this row, the 10AWG cable has a current rating of 40 amps, well in excess of the 10 amps for our example. So everything is good, unless we want to use this cable in the engine bay. A cable that's only rated at 140 degrees Fahrenheit is not permitted for use in engine space. So if we wanted to run any part of this cable through the engine bay, we must choose a higher temperature cable. Here we can now see that cable rated for 167 degrees Fahrenheit is acceptable for use in engine spaces and is rated at 30 amps. So this is well above our 10 amp load. So we need a cable that is 10 AWG and rated with an insulation temperature of at least 167 degrees Fahrenheit. There are however different tables for bundling cables. If we bundle up to three cables, we must use this table. Bunching of cables causes them to retain more heat. In this example, the same conductor's ampacity is reduced to 21 amps, still much higher than our requirements of 10 amps. However, if our cables are bundled more than this, we must apply further corrections as shown here. So in our example, we found our cable had an ampacity rating of 21 amps from the ampacity table for a bundled conductor. But if we bundled it in a conduit with more than 25 other cables, it cannot shed heat as well. So we must apply the correction factor of 0.571. So to do this, tap into the calculator, 21 times 0 0.571, and we get 11.99 amps. So let's call it 12 amps. This is still safely above our original load of 10 amps, but only by 2 amps. And yes, this is an extreme example to make a comparison between the initial rating of 30 amps to the reduced rating now of just 12 amps. In our example, a cable with a higher temperature insulation rating would have been a much better option. So to summarize, we always calculate cable size first based on voltage drop and then compare this to the ampacity table to ensure the cable has sufficient rating for the task in hand. In most cases, the cable size formula will specify a thicker cable than the ampacity table. If this is not the case, just use a bigger cable size.